Rio the devil in a black cloak Street gospel, light of the temple Saw swing, kill a lie from the ghetto The hood messenger, let him know hell's close Black burial, the devil in a black cloak Yo, what is up? Welcome to the Street Gospel Podcast. I'm your host, Day One. And this is episode number... Yo, Cam, what episode is this? 43. No. Is it? Yeah, 43. Dang. I was going to say it was 42. Last one was 42. My bad. So last one was episode number 42 with uh, the funny, interesting uh, thinker. Got me thinking about different things, but it was a great podcast. With Joe Bob. Yeah, that's his real name. Joe Bob. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't match. Uh, I don't know. He didn't want to, If he did have a real name, he didn't want to tell me, but he said his name was Joe Bob. But if you haven't watched that podcast, go back, check it out. Definitely was a good podcast. All right, so we're going to get down to the business today because I, I got a great guest, but you know, I got to shout out my sponsors. So first sponsor of the day is Elevate Ministries. So Elevate Ministries is located in Orange, California. It's a great church. Matter of fact, it's where I go to church. So if you're in the OC, Orange area, try to check out Elevate Ministries. They have services on Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, they even have an early service at 8.30. They have a Woodier campus. So if you're in the Woodier area, you can go check them out there. Uh, great church, family-oriented, uh, great youth. Uh, if you have young kids, teenagers, uh, young adults, uh, great for them. They even have stuff for the little kids, but it's an overall great church, uh, highly recommended. Uh, they love God, love people. Make sure you check them out. And then my second one is an organization ran my, by my brother-in-law, Art Pena. So Art Pena runs an organization called Hope and Promises. Uh, this is a great organization that goes out to the community. Uh, they provide cloth, clothing, food, uh, medical supplies. They just help people all over the place. Uh, they've been branching out, going outside of the country, uh, making sure they can help wherever they can. So check them out at hopeandpromises.com. They're also on the gram at Hope and Promises. I almost forgot. Sorry, Art. My bad, dude. Cam, <laughs> yeah, Uncle Art always writes me something to read, and I, I just never like to read it because it just it, it doesn't natural. seem natural. It yeah. just seems like it's like forced. So, uh, I promise, Art, I'll read it next time. Hope and promises. But anyways, we got to get down to the business today. And, you know, I always like to play a little bit of music when I introduce my guests. So this guy right here, he is, first of all, he's a husband. He's a father. He's a son of immigrants from the Philippines. I mean... I'll talk about that connection that we'll have a little bit. He is an OG. I mean, when you talk about OG in uh, the LA music scene, uh, this guy's been there, done that. Uh, I found some things out today that I was like, made the connection. I was like, man, that's pretty dope. This guy right here is part of, of the legendary Beat Junkies. I mean, you can't get any more legendary than that. He's an avid snowboarder. And then I've been watching him on his gram. He plays a little golf here and there. I mean, <laughs> for me, uh, I always had a hard time with the windmill. You know, I just can't get the ball past. Oh, well, that's miniature golf. Never mind, man. <laughs> but this guy is a legendary DJ. Uh, I mean, I'm just happy to get him on the show today. Let's welcome to the show, Mr. Icy Ice. Yo, what's up, brother Dave? Thank you for having me, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming out, bro. Appreciate it, man. So we've been trying to make a connection for a little bit, and we were laughing because uh, I remember last year, I think everybody was pretty much done with uh, the pandemic and everything, and uh, they were just wanted to get out. Mm -hmm. And there's a spot, we both live in the same city, which is funny. Yep. There's a spot down the street. So my wife asks me, hey, uh, do you want to go uh, get some food there and maybe invite some friends? It's, it's outside, maybe people are not going to freak out. And I said, sure. I look on the schedule of, of this spot, and they have, they have a DJ. So, hey, they end up, they end up playing music. So we invite some friends, family. We show up, and then uh, having a good time. DJ's great, playing music. Uh, and then 
I see you, and I recognize you. And I was like, where is this guy from? I know this dude from somewhere. And I'm looking, and I'm looking. And then uh, I asked my sister, I go, do you know that guy right there? And then she goes, yeah, that's DJ Icy Ice. She goes, I know him. No, no, she didn't tell me she knew you. She just, said, I, she just goes, that's DJ Icy Ice. And I go, that's who it is. So whatever, keep going. All of a sudden, I get a shout out from behind the DJ booth. You weren't DJ, but you, you had some friends there. And Happy birthday shout out to Dave. It's his birthday. I'm like, I got a shout out from Icy Ice. And my sister does laugh and she goes, I know him. <laughs> I told him to give you a shout out. So it's kind of how we met. It's kind of funny because that was like a, almost a year ago. That's already. about a year ago. Now. It's crazy, yeah, crazy, man. So how you been, man? How's everything? Man, I've been good. Everything's been good. Uh, you know, things are opening up. This pandemic seems like it's uh, it's it's dying moving down, we're right? moving, dying down, and we're moving past this whole thing. But right. but yeah, man. Uh, you know, in general, I'm I'm feeling good. Uh, family's good. Family's healthy. Everything's good, man. That's good, man. Um, yeah, I I think uh, everybody's trying to get to some sort of normalcy a little bit. Uh, I was talking to a mutual friend today, uh, Bobito, mm. the chef, another DJ, right? right? Fun <laughs> DJ. I mean, we've had Bobby had a lot of family gatherings and stuff like that, but. Uh, he was uh, he he was telling me he was on the show when when the pandemic first broke out. And he said he had to he had to take a job because it was getting rough, and he said that uh, he's he's quitting in about a week, yeah. and he's going back to events and stuff like that. So I was like, man, bro, I I I, I was feeling for him because it was I, it was just rough. I have some friends in the audio video lighting industry, and uh, they were feeling it bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody was feeling it bad throughout the pandemic, but, you know, like anyone that was in entertainment, you yeah. know, and DJs fall under entertainment, right? We, we were just cut completely. And then as everything was opening up, you know, people, you know, society was opening up, everything was coming back to normal. DJs were not getting gigs because events were the last thing to, they didn't want mass gatherings. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was rough. We didn't have um, income. Right. We, 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 our, our, our means of, of producing income was just cut from us. And so, yeah, people like Bobito and a lot of friends had to go through that, that type of experience. And, and you, you think like, I mean, if you're good in that industry, you, you know, you, you have a job for life. I mean, it's just, you have a job for life and it just, I think it was like one of those things where I was like, whoa, like nothing's really jumping off. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, so I, I, I definitely felt, but you, we're going to jump ahead here because I think it goes along with this. You found something to do, right? I did. I, I was able to find live streaming. And so for a person that doesn't know what live streaming is, it's just basically us plopping a camera in front of us and DJing live for people. So for instance, when we first started live streaming, it was just through Instagram and Facebook. And we would just plop a, 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 our camera or our phone right in front of us. And we were live streaming on the Instagram Live. Dope. And then a few months into it, you know, like just, I guess just a mass of, of DJs were jumping on to the live stream platform on Instagram. And they just shut it down. They just kept shutting everybody right. down. And they were just like, nope. This is, copy, not, copy this is not copyright and the, all that, yeah, right? The copyrights, yeah. Ah. The music copyrights, that was not part of Instagram's licensing or whatever for, oh, for doing live stuff and then so one dj got smart to the game and he said yo there's these gamers on twitch and they, they there's music in all the video games what if we can dj on twitch and so he knew someone at twitch he approached him and he said can us djs dj on twitch can we live stream on twitch because they're mostly big for uh, a lot of uh, uh, gamers and gamers are going live on there, mm -hmm. and and then they found a little loophole in getting you guys on there with actually playing cop copyrighted material, as long as it was live though, right? As long as it was live, but yeah, the same thing happened where as soon as all the DJs started live streaming and everybody was on the, the, the Twitch platform. That was it. Like wow. record companies were trying to shut that down too, you know, because of the licensing and all of that. But thank God they were able to work out something and they were able to work it out to where as long as our recorded our recordings weren't there, we they were fine with us just doing it live. 
Man. So as long as we didn't keep the recordings up, then we were allowed to live stream. And that was fine because that allowed us to still do what we do, still interact with the, the community, still build community and build our audience and all of that. So it was kind of a uh, new platform. You were kind of at the uh, of the cusp, of you and a few other DJs, of, of that whole creating that whole thing. But it was kind of like forced creation, right? I mean, you, you had to, it was sink or swim. Like, we, we got to figure out something, sink right? Sink or swim, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I think it was more for our mental health and it was more for just us to just, because, you know, as creative people, we, we love to interact with others. Right. And that was just taken away from us when we were in quarantine and we couldn't leave the house and you're just stuck week after week, day after day, month after month in the house. Wow. And your only, your only chance to go out is to the supermarket or something like that. Right. But yeah, no live events. And so that gave us the ability to be able to play for people, not just locally, but all over the world and um, still do our craft, share our, our love for music and all of that. So... With that said, you guys were able to generate some sort of income through, I would say, subscriptions. For, like People can subscribe to, to your channel. Yes. So with Twitch, uh, it gives you the ability to create some income through s subscriptions, through um, donations, and, wow. uh, and then, you know, Cash App and all that stuff. But it wasn't anything like a gig. You know, like it wasn't the same yeah. or equivalent to a gig money or anything like that. But right. it was something... But I think more than the money, it was just the ability to be able to interact with people on a daily basis. And, and I, I think that's the that's the key, right? I mean, that that's what we all. Is it getting hot in here, Cam? You you want to pop that door open? I think it's getting a little warm in here. We'll, we'll, yeah, pop it open. I'm getting hot too. I don't know what's up my air today, man. But I think I think that's what we missed in the pandemic overall. Right. I think. Uh, at first, I think everybody thought, "Oh, yeah, we'll be fine. We can, we can, we can interact." I think they thought we can interact with, uh, with church. You know, we don't, we, we don't need the four walls. We'll just watch it online. It's fine. I think it was, uh, you know, we don't need it. You know, we can just be our just little family. And then after like a couple of months, I think people were like, "Yo, man, like we need something. We we need to interact." We, right. I, I was missing church. I know my. Uh, uh, you know, my friends were missing church. I remember talking to my friends telling me, hey, dude, let's uh, let's get together. And everybody was like, ooh. And I was like, you know, him and his wife, it was a little backyard barbecue. Yeah. And when we got together and we just sat there and ate and talked and laughed and listened to music. And I was like, yeah. we missed the interaction. We, we, we missed something about that. Right. So it was, it was same, we need that, right? Same thing, yeah. Like, Bobito is one of my, my close friends. And, yeah. Like, it was scary for us to get together for the first time in months, but when we finally did, it was just like, oh, it was just uh, therapeutic to be around friends, family, kids playing with kids. Right. Us I think, barbecuing together again, you know? Yeah, I think we, I think we, it, you, you kind of got to the point where it's like, if I got to risk it, then I, I have to do it because you were almost mentally and even physically missing getting together. And I, I think that's what, uh, music does i think that's what uh a good dj does right he brings people together well a, a good dj will will uh enhance enhance, enhance the the environment of people getting together. okay he, a good dj could enhance but but a bad dj will uh hinder <laughs> right <laughs> yes they can so yeah i think it's definitely uh was something that we needed we needed to come back together and just say hey you know but let's go to the beginning because I mentioned in the in the in the intro you're you're really an OG. I mean we're kind of the same age. I'm you know I think you're a little, just a hair older than me. But <laughs> in the LA uh, DJ scene, I mean you were kind of in the beginning of that. Uh, I can remember like like DJs and uh, house flyers and hand drawn flyers in those days. Yeah. Where where did your journey begin in DJing? Man, my 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 journey began in DJing with all of that, exactly what you're talking about. And uh, when people were doing backyard parties, people were doing hall parties, people were doing, you know, uh, I, I grew up in that era of like the K-Day Mixmasters, you know, yeah. 
That OG. was Julio G, Tony G. Those those yeah. are the OG OGs, right. the guys that really put it down for DJs right. like me. Especially Julio, man. I mean, yeah. legendary. Legendary, man. And for them to put me on, it was like, man, it was a blessing. Yeah. It was definitely a blessing. But, yeah, my journey comes from... I, you know, I'm a product of those guys. Right. I'm a product of uh, what they they, they laid the ground uh, the groundwork for as far as DJing. And and I think in in that era of uh, of DJing, it, it, I, I could imagine there wasn't that many Filipino guys, right? No, there wasn't. So I mean, you were just like taking like I mean, the level to the culture. To Julio G, Tony G, those got you know Hispanics kind of took it to another another level than those early DJs and in early NWA days, and then there was those guys that kind of came out of that. But I think you, E-Man, kind of represented the Filipino culture. I mean, it was it was it was a different it was a different vibe as far as like that never got touched before, or maybe people didn't think you guys could DJ or whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, like uh, you know, Filipino DJs were were plenty. Around. They were yeah. around. There there was a big big okay. scene. It's just it wasn't known, and people really didn't know about no. it unless. You had Filipino friends, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and so you didn't know, you know. But yeah, the the cool thing with Julio G is uh, when when uh, you know like he took over Easy E Easy E's radio show. He was Easy E's DJ, right? Uh, on ninety two point three. I, I used to listen to that show. Yeah, yeah. this radio. When Easy E passed in the mid nineties, uh, Julio G and Tony G took over, and uh, it was their mission to put on some some new DJs, and wow. so. The whole, the whole uh, thing of ninety two point three, the beat was no color lines. Yeah, they were all about unity and just all the, all cultures represented. Wow. And so, I had I had met Julio G. You know, I was already a beat junkie. We were already like a crew. There was al- already parties that we were DJing and all the all of those things. But when I met Julio G, I went to one of these record pool meetings uh, at Motown Records. And I went up to Julio, and I'm like, man, this is one of my DJ heroes here. I was nervous. <laughs> sure. I was sweating. And I was just like, oh, my God. Julio, honored to meet you, you know? And I was just like, just telling him about the Filipino That's scene. Dope. And I said, you know what? I'm doing one of our parties. Can you come out and check it out? And he did. Wow. Guy of his stature, he was, he was nice, and nice, yeah. nice enough to... I mean, you know, it's one thing to say, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll come out, check it out. Right. And not show up, but he said, I'll, I'll check it out. And he showed up, and he was impressed. And the, the were rest you, was Were you game. nervous? When he when he was there, yeah. yes. <laughs> I was super nervous. <laughs> yeah, like... Uh, did, you, did you have a go-to set? Like, you were just like, okay, when he shows up, this is what I'm doing. I did have a go-to set that I, <laughs> I've practiced and practiced and practiced, and so yeah, of course, I put my 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 best set forward for him to hear, and then you know just him seeing, his 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 uh conception of Asian parties or Asian hip, you know, they, he was like, I didn't even think Asians were into hip hop. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I didn't you, you didn't think it was like a, a part of that culture. I mean, you, you could, only because we didn't see it, right? Mm-hmm. And when you go to like. You're from the South Bay. There's a there's a bigger community there of you know not only Asian, Samoan, different different types of people there, yeah. a mixed culture there. When you're from like my neighborhood, Southeast or East LA or mm-hmm. you know these areas, Hispanics. You go across the tracks, Alameda, yep. a little bit more blacks. So you see different stuff. <laughs> but that was like a whole different vibe, you right. know, there and, and a whole different people that we we never really ran into because they weren't in our neighborhood. We're in their neighborhood. Yeah. So I could see Julio probably going and saying, you yeah, know, he grew up in Linwood, yeah, Compton, you know, and and yeah, he never crossed over into the Carson Long Beach, yeah, you Filipino you know, scenes, you know, you go know, like that <laughs> little south of the one ten, a little bit more down in there, and then you, you it's, it's 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 you just don't go that far down there. But yeah, that night room. that night I invited him. I was actually DJing at Prince's nightclub. Wow! And at Prince's nightclub, you know, like. They gave they gave the Asian DJs the the crappy nights, you know. Like we had the week nights, and then you know everybody else had the Friday, Saturday, you know, the prime nights. Yeah. And us Asians, we had a Wednesday, Tuesday, you know. But I invited him out. We had a packed house, thousand people in there, and Dope. he was just tripping. He was like, "They're they're jamming to EPMD. They're jamming to Rock Him. They're they're." Yo, they're going crazy to to like Mad Lion, you know. <laughs> 
You guys do it. All, you guys had all the all, all the music. Everything was there. You guys were just as good as anybody else. Just not noticed. Just yeah. not noticed. Yeah. Man. So I I was doing a little research on your parents. Hard working immigrants from the Philippines that came here. Mm -hmm. uh, they definitely were. Uh, uh, it seemed like they didn't want you to be a DJ, right? They, they, they yeah. I mean, maybe not in a sense of they didn't want you to be. Obviously, you became it, but maybe they had like a different ambition for you to to be, right? That's I saw a little a clip of you, and and they're talking about, it and they're like, yeah, I think your father was like an, a a professional art architect, architect in, in yeah. the Philippines, and uh, come here. I mean, they're for a better life, better thing, and you're and you're saying, I want to be a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what what is that conversation like, you know, initially? Well, you know, like my parents, man, they 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 were so supportive. They were That's so, so supportive. Dope. That's so dope. Um, but they were supportive because it was my hobby. Okay. They, you know, like um, when I got into DJing, they're like, oh, okay, cool. He's playing with music. Oh, it's something for him to do Staying with his out friends. Of trouble. Keep him out of trouble right? because gangs were were crazy <laughs> in my neighborhood too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had Samoan gangs, black gangs, Latino gangs, all of that, and Filipino gangs all. Like, all around. So DJing kept me out of that, out of that scene. Because all the kids I grew up with became a gang. Wow. Music, music took me away from all of that. And so my parents recognized that they were supportive of that. And then my dad also recognized that, oh, okay, this is a way for him to make some money. This is a way for him to kind of uh, learn how to budget and, you know, reinvest into equipment and music and Dope. when i say music i'm talking about buying records and yeah. and cds and all of that uh we we didn't have downloads and all of that back then yeah and so yeah <laughs> like he just saw it as a business venture and something you know cool to do while i'm young that's so cool because uh y you know back in the day i wanted to be a rapper man and i remember my dad bringing me uh instrumentals proper dose uh, oh they, wow yeah all kinds of different stuff he'd bring it and he'd be like look this sample cutie pie or this sample this nice. and he and he knew and then he would hear like hip-hop beats and he would be like oh that's a sample from this from back in my day and i'll be like what and so he was always supportive there's something about when you when parents are supportive of, of of a hobby but they see that you love it and they go okay like maybe it wasn't the dream I had for them, but I can see that this person is that my son is sold out for this, and I'm gonna support this because he's good, and it and, it, and it's keeping him out of trouble, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they were supportive. Yeah. They, you know, like your dad, um, he was, he was, he was, uh, he recognized all those things, and he he was he was uh, supportive in in letting me do these things. Were you good? I sucked right away. Then. No, I sucked. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, so, but he didn't know. He didn't know. Like, he didn't grow up with DJs, so he didn't know a good DJ from a bad DJ. But I sucked back then. Because <laughs> I always ask that with, with, with musicians, artists, uh, uh, athletes. I was like, did you know you were good right away? Like, was there something different? I think there's only been, like, one guy. Like, Shea Cotton was, like, a, a, a beast in basketball. He came to the show. And he was like, well, I was bigger. I was more athletic than everybody. That's why they called me the man child. I was, I was good fast, you know. But mostly everybody goes, no, I had a lot of work to do. I wasn't that great. Yeah. I think that's a great uh, uh, story ab about a lot of people is because when you're not good at something, it's very hard right away. It's very hard to continue that journey, like that dream. Like right, a lot of people, I want to do this. Okay. And then they, maybe they suck. And then they stick it out, and then they realize, like, like yourself, like I made a career out of this. I, I, I made a living out of this. This is my passion. I'm, I'm known as OG now. Like I, I've done, done it all. So I think there's something to be said about somebody that perseveres through the initial herd of like, yeah, you're not that good, son, <laughs> or you're not that good, dude. Like stop, you know? Yeah, I, I think you know, you, you may not have the talent right in the beginning, but that can be developed. You, yeah. you. Uh, as long as you have heart and you are passionate about it, uh, you'll you'll definitely stick it through until you become good at it. Because I think know? I think in this in this generation, maybe the last one or two generations, everything has to come quick, and it does for a lot of them, right? They they get Mike, yeah, they get, yeah, they get famous quick because of, of the internet and everything. And 
our day, I mean, you had to go and take your mixtape somewhere or go and prove to somebody that you're good. Mm -hmm. Like, act physically, get in the car, get on the bus, and take your stuff and go down there and show exactly. them, I can do this. Or hustle your, your CDs, your tapes, whatever it may be. And I think now this generation's a little bit, doesn't know that, that working man's mentality of, no, we had to do it the old school, hard way. Flyers were made but drawn and copied hand -drawn. and hand, and handed out and we went here and went there i mean there's something to be said about that era i mean i'm not knocking this era props to the kids that made it fast you know i mean it, it is what it is that's all they have, that's what they have to work with right that's what they know you know yeah and, and we knew what we knew back then but i think it was a harder grind yeah coming from our generation I to what too. what people have now you know i think it's i think it's a great uh a great thing. I mean, I, I, I appreciate those times. I appreciate the grind of those days. Um, am I a little jealous sometimes of the <laughs> like grind of nowadays? I'm like, well, a little bit. But I think it, it, it created uh, a tougher skin for a lot of guys that, that have, like yourself, that have lasted, you know. Well, the OG and, and Tony and all these guys, they, they lasted for, for a very long time. And I think right. it's because of those rough years very rough years right? very rough years yeah because in those days right we you only could be popular if you got on the radio or you got on tv correct yeah i guess uh i guess you could say yeah that, i mean be, getting on the radio was equivalent of being uh you know a youtube star or something or <laughs> equivalent of being uh you know an instagram influencer you, you 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 had the eyeballs you know like in those days you didn't have social media so you were either listening to radio or you were watching TV. There was nothing else. And that's the only platforms we had. I mean, nowadays, I mean, you're big on Twitch. Some people are big on the gram. Some people are big on YouTube. I mean, it, it's so funny because you can, somebody can tell you, have you heard of this guy? And you're like, no. Mm -hmm. You go to his page and the dude has like Millions. a million followers, right? <laughs> and you're like, I've never heard of this dude. And he's blowing up. I mean, back in that day, I mean, it was just one of those things where you just you kind of lucky hustle, but you had to get lucky to get. Where was your lucky point? Was it just meeting Julio G and then him just coming? Would, would you consider that was your, your lucky charm there? That was my break. break I think yeah. that was my break. Like Julio gave me a guest spot to be on radio. But of course, if I, if I blew it and I sucked and all of that, then that would have been the end of it. But I did enough to impress him to invite me back and and then of course once you get that break it's like the real work begins right you have to maintain that maintain status, that right and get better yeah did, w when you did that but see it wasn't all about just talent though it was all about like your speaking skills you talking to others getting to know others building relationships with other people within the radio station and all of that you where know, did you Julio get that where did you get the that door from? I think I got that from my parents. Yeah. I think that, you know, my parents coming from a whole other country, not really speaking English, coming here, having to having to just build a whole new life, not having a friend, you know, not too many friends, not, not the family support or any of that, and just grind their way through to make a life. I think that's I what... I think I got that from my parents. I think a lot of people miss that too, right? I mean, they miss the interaction, you know. I, I, I'm sure you teach your kids the interaction. I always tell my kids... Be nice to everybody because you don't know who they are. And you, you, you might be mean to them, and then you go for a job interview, and that's the and guy that's going to... <laughs> you know what I mean? So it And it's worked so many times. I mean, you, you just... I've met people, and, and then, you know, I've, I've been at the gym, even with my, my podcast, and there's a guy that goes, you know, hey, uh, I've seen your podcast. And I'm like, what? And I was thinking in my head, if I was rude to this guy in the locker room or said something stupid to him, I mean, it would have been the end yeah. of it. So... You never know, but I think it's a it's a skill that a lot a lot of people have. You can have the talent, but there's something about being able to interact and people actually liking you right. behind the scenes, right? Exactly. Because I think a lot of people are uh, one thing in front of the camera, or one thing behind the tables, or one thing behind the mic, and then once it's off, is like a whole different person, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I, th I I think it's a it's a, it's a great interaction. Um. You know what I wanted? To, okay, so 92.3, the beat. I mean, at that time, it was huge. You go in there, you DJ. 
He's alive? Yeah, he's alive. So if you bump the table, if you drop something, if you miss a cue something... Here's a story on my very first <laughs> my very first time with Julio G. That happened. I was practicing, uh, you know, in commercial break. I'm practicing. I, I, I'm just getting my set ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And then he's like, okay, he gives me the, the grand introduction, and then he kicks it to me, dead air. I'm like, what the heck is going on with that? Oh, man, dude. Nothing, nothing, nothing. He comes running into the studio. He's like, oh. he clicks one one button or, you know, one switch up. He's like, you unclick this thing, and, uh, you know, it's been muted. Oh, man. And so I'm like, oh. I blew it. What a way to start, bro. Wait, what a way to start, yeah. Oh, how did how did the set go after that? Oh, after that, I, ki- I killed it. But, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, oh, like, man. I'm done. Forget it. That threw me off so bad, man. Dude, th- but, I mean, most people would just be like, it's done. I, I, and, and just get over-wrecked and just probably blow it the whole time. You didn't blow it. I didn't blow it, though. But And then, uh, at the same time, Julio was super cool and, you know. He was like, oh, it's all good, dog. You know, you got this, man. <laughs> well, 92 point three. I mean, it was uh, probably one or two in the in, in the in the uh, in the ratings at that time. I mean, Power 106. Yeah, it was always head to head with Power 106. Yeah, so one and two always. Power 106 was always like more glitz and glamour. 92.3, the beat was more like a. Uh, like 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 a street more street i i always felt that like 92.3 it was like the like the new k day almost not not as much i don't think you'll ever get the craig mack days right of k day but i probably the closest thing it was the closest thing to it it's since since then right i mean you had theo and all these different characters on there and it was just seemed more street and more like connected to the street especially with julio g and then even when easy was at his show on there exactly yeah so i think they always had their ear to the street right there so you blow up and (laughs) what does that mean for a guy like you at that time are you making money are you getting popular are you getting more gigs or is it is it just steady um yeah it was a little bit of everything a little bit of everything that you're 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 claiming there but yeah it did give me the notoriety to be able to play bigger stages to be able to travel to tour and different things like that but um i think if anything it was another it was another door opening for bigger and better things within my career of djing you know um before that point of getting on radio, I just aspired to be on the radio, or I aspired to play a club. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, that gave me that ability to play big clubs and play big stages and play celebrity parties and play Grammy after parties and different wow. things like that. And it just all came fast, and it, 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 it was just hitting me from all sides, but... I was just trying to take it in and do my best to keep up and and all of that. But, you know, hindsight, looking back on everything, is just like, man, one door opened another door, opened another door, and it was just a progression, a did, progression did, did, over the years. Did you ever get caught up, like, where you got, like, yeah, I'm that, I'm that dude, or the, the fame kind of gets you, the, the, or did your parents kind of, the way they raised you, you kind of stood grounded? Well, I think, uh, number one, yeah, my parents kept me grounded. My group of friends kept me grounded because uh, they would always, like, tease me saying, oh, you big time now, you big time. <laughs> no, man, you, 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 you can't hang with us. I'm like, no, come on, man, I'm still the same, st- still the same Isaiah, man, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's dope. Because, I mean, it's very easy to get, you know, you start doing celebrity parties and Grammy parties and things like that. It's very easy to okay you know i'm i'm that guy and i'm i'm different now but you've always seemed like you've been grounded and and humble i mean it's it's weird because i think all the the beat junkies are kind of like that they're just great at what they do and they let their work speak for themselves i mean is is that a correct you know assessment yeah i think uh we we were all more about our craft rather than you know, glamour and all of that other stuff. Like, there's a lot of DJs that, or there's 
young DJs that become DJs because they want that lifestyle or they want to holler at the girls or they want, you know, whatever. But to us, it was always music first. It was about, you know, right. the, the skills and the, the craft, the, the craft of DJing that was more important to us than anything. And, and every so, DJ has their, their, their style. You need, you got, I like Kid Capri, you know, Kid Capri, great DJ. You got Khaled, you know, a little, little bit more flat, flashier, but then, you know, I think you have like a DJ like, uh, you know, underrated Jazzy Jeff to all the DJs, top of the top of the food chain. For everybody else, they're like Jazzy Jeff. Really, I'm like, yeah. Have you ever like seen him? What he's done? Like, this is crazy. The stuff that he that he does, you know. And so, I think they all have their different style. But I think, for the most part, the DJ. I never felt this way, but I think a lot of people feel like the DJ, especially when there's a rapper in the front, like. Eric B. Rakim, you know, it, it, it's, it seemed like the DJ is kind of like in the background. But I, me personally, I was in the front. I was in the band. I tried to rap, do, do different things on the mic. But I was always like, the DJ, man, he's the one. Like, he's the one that makes the thing happen. Like, nothing really gets going until he gets it going. Like, the rapper could do the whole shout out, do everything. But the DJ puts a good mix and, and, and adds a scratch and gets the party started. Like, I want to be that dude. And he's the DJ, to me, was always, like, low-key. <laughs> low-key cool. Like, like I, I don't know, man. Maybe that's just my thought. But is that, like, a true, you know, a, a story of DJing? I mean, it seemed like they're just, like, I just like being back here. And I just like to watch. Like, I'm going to do my thing. No, I mean, you know, like, it's, it's a true assessment. But, yeah, like, DJs are... are pretty much like low key and then we're always in the back we're the, we're we're the the drummer kind of of the band you know we're the we're the heartbeat the heart soul of the DJ rapper type of thing you know but yeah i think um a good DJ will just elevate everything and will enhance the the MC the B-boy the graph artist you know just hip hop in general um, cuz music is the heart and soul of everything okay so let's let me ask you this does the DJ enhance the music or does the music enhance the DJ? In other words, you can have two DJs, right? And they can play the same set or same music, right? It take, th th There's a difference, right? There's a big difference, yeah. Okay, okay. What is the difference between a good DJ and a bad DJ in your in your, in your Well, opinion? in that example, in that example, it's how the DJ executes that music. Okay. So, I mean, two DJs can play the same music, but one will just do it in a way that just elevates the whole experience versus someone that is just playing the music or it will just be a an average experience. Yeah. I mean, maybe he plays it too long. Maybe he doesn't mix it at the right points. Maybe... A little bit of everything, right, yeah. Right. Wrong uh, rhythm, wrong... Wrong tempo, all kinds of stuff, right? Or you're playing the jam after jam, and then you just play one bad song, oh. and then just kills the whole mood. I hate that. Whereas man. a good DJ will know exactly what to hit you with, hit after you know, like different is it, jam. Is, is it a filling, or, or do you do you, do you feel it? Are you feeling the crowd, or is it just something in you? And then you, is the crowd moving you, or are you moving the crowd? It's both. Both. It's okay. both. But see again. The difference between a, a, a DJ that's just playing music versus someone that's really in the moment and feeling the vibe and the energy and kind of uh, taking it in and then giving it back, it's, there's a big difference because one DJ will perform that music, one DJ will pour out their heart wow. and soul with that music, whereas one other DJ is just playing that music. So there's, so there's three different things there that you're talking about. Just a, a lot of people have claim to be DJs and they're they bring their laptop and they just run some things and it overlaps a little bit and people hire these people for for weddings I mean I've been to plenty of weddings and plenty of birthday parties and I'm thinking me and my wife we, we love to dance everybody we're believers we love God but we love to dance yes and we look forward to like a good wedding oh I can have a DJ the DJ. I mean, Bobby DJed my sister's 40th birthday. Mm -hmm. I was like, Bobby's DJ. Cool. I know yeah. it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Right? 
so I, the, the the parties and you and you look forward to it, you get there, and the DJ is horrible. I mean, I mean, I'm not talking like just bad. I'm just talking like horrible, like who, DJ so and so, and you're just like okay, and he's just up there and he's just flopping, flopping, flopping. Um, why do people not spend money on a DJ, on a good DJ for an event in their life that is is so meaningful? You know, a 40th birthday, 50th birthday, a retirement party, uh, a, a 30th anniversary. Or uh, even their wedding. Or their wedding. <laughs> Why is it, it seems like the DJ is the last thing they hire when that's a huge part of the evening. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that logic. I, you know, everybody has their reasons, but yes, a, a a bad DJ will just ruin your special event. Yeah, it's like it, people it, don't remember your cake. No, people don't remember the food. No, they just remember the friends, and then they remember the experience. And who who builds that experience? It's the music, the DJ behind all of that. You know, every wedding that I've been to, I don't, I don't, I don't. Re- you're you're one hundred percent right when you say that. So funny, it just clicked in my head. I if I can go back to the last five years of weddings that I've been to, maybe not during the pandemic. Let's go before that. But I remember the good ones. My 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 cousin Tim and, and his wife Vanessa. It was, a, it was a little wedding, family wedding. I don't know who DJed that day, but we, it, it might have been Bobby, I think. But we had a blast. We had fun. I don't remember the ceremony. I don't remember nothing else. I just remember our whole family being together and having fun. My cousin JoJo and Nancy. I, I remember a little bit of the ceremony because I was in their wedding. But I remember having a great time dancing, having, having fun. Remember that count? But I do remember the weddings I went to. And it was horrible. It was like... Maybe one song me and my wife got to dance to, and I would be, and I was just like, "Yeah, man, I, I, I don't get it. Like, spend the money, get the DJ. It's, it's worth it." Yeah, it's unfortunate. You know, some people just put more importance on the napkins and the cake <laughs> and the decor or the drapery and all of that stuff, and um, they try and skimp on the DJ oh. and. Unfortunately, you hear about those horror stories or you've experienced it, as you say right here, that you've experienced bad DJs at weddings. And it's like, it just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it sucks. What's the reverse of that? You, you, one of the best, you know what to play and you go to, you go to a party, you go to an event and nobody gets lit. Nobody gets turned up. And are, are you, do you care? Or are you just keep doing your thing? <sighs> okay. So your question is. Have I done an event where... Where nobody does anything, you know, and you're just, you're working. You're doing your thing. You're like, this is going to... And nobody gets up. Nobody really gets lit. Are, are you thinking, like, I'm doing something wrong? Are these people are just, like, whack? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been to events where it's part of their culture where they're not dancing. They just want to drink. But they tell me that ahead of time, so okay. I know that, and I'm like, okay. Okay. I'm going to do my thing. You guys drink. Cool. But, yes, I've been in those instances where I'm doing my thing and just nobody will not get up for some reason. And, of course, that you as an entertainer, you as a DJ, you as someone that, that's supposed to, you know, you're hired to, to uh, you know, keep the flow of the party going, right. all of that. Like, that, that, that hurts sometimes, you know? Uh. Yeah, and I've yeah. had a lot of those. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be like a little rough, man. If uh, uh, I, I just don't see like me going to a party and I see DJ Icy Ice back there, and all, I, I just don't see me sitting down the whole time. You know, I see, I know you're gonna play a good set. I know it's gonna be fun. I know we're gonna we're gonna be able to dance. I'm waiting for you to play Haven, <laughs> so we can go over there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna work that out for you, man. <laughs> I would love to play. I would love to play there. All right, my birthday's coming up. We're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a go-to set? And what I mean by that, like, do you have like, like, I know these songs are gonna get them up. You know, I I used to plan sets before like that, but in this pandemic, I think 
me being on Twitch and playing on a daily basis and all of that, it's just expanded my library so much more. And then it's given me the ability to be able to play from the heart. So I think I freestyle everything. Really? I don't, um, I don't plan sets. Oh, man. That's I'm really to the point where I can just kind of pick and choose and whatever I'm feeling at the moment or, or if I am trying to play for a crowd, whatever I think they would, uh, that would move them, that's what I'm going with. What is the best event to play? The best event to play? The, the best event to play and the best type of people to play for. Oh gosh, that's. I'm not talking race. I'm just talking like the the the, the, the atmosphere of the, what, what are you looking for? Like you know, like you go into a place and you're like, "Oh, these people are gonna be lit today." I could tell. And then you know when you go to a place, you're like, "Yeah, it's gonna be rough." Well, it depends because see, I play everything across the board, and yeah, I enjoy a house party, I enjoy a wedding, I enjoy a big stage or big club or even just a grimy hip hop concert. I love it all. Um, I say the best. The best is where they are just ready to party. Okay. The best is uh, you don't have to do too much to just get them going. They're already going. So I just do a little something to add to that, and then their energy's through the roof. You know. Right. That's the best. That's the best feeling when they're just engaged. Engaged. They're. You know, like just ah, oh, you know that reaction of ah, oh, no, whatever you're doing, a scratch, a cut, a, a trick, or even just playing a certain song, oh, that that experience, like just love it. And there's there's nothing like performing, right? I mean, there's no 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 feeling. Do you still get that that the butterflies, the that that feeling of just like man, this is the, this is great? Because I always tell people like when. Performing with the band or being on stage, like like there's something about that. It's not it's not a prideful thing or anything like that. It's just like a feeling like you don't you don't have that. No, yeah, I, I still to this day I always still get little butterflies when I'm about to j- hit the stage or you know perform in front of people. I think that's it, what it, keeps guys like you sharp. Like that that's, keeps you on your toes, right? Yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. And what is it about a good backyard party, man? Oh, man. Because they, 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 they got to still be the best, best right? There's, There's nothing like a backyard, backyard, especially for us that grew up in SoCal. You have a good backyard party, it, it, it's just the most fondest thing. Yeah. I mean, like, I still enjoy doing Like, I, I got called, especially during the pandemic, everything was backyard or at home or whatever when you couldn't do a venue, right? Yeah. And so people were still hiring me to do, like, small little gatherings but man, those small little gatherings were just, they were ready to party. They, they were just cooped up for too long. They wanted to party. And so those were fun, man. I did, you know, 40th birthdays or weddings and things like that in people's backyards. And they were just the most lit. Wow, man. So you, you played everything. You've, ever since you were young, you've, you've been a promoter. I heard you had like a, a, a rec, like I did have record, a record store at a time. Record store. Yeah. Um, everything that you can think of, you you've probably done. So, what is your motivation now? Now that you, you when you get to the top of the hill, it's very hard for for to be motivated. I've seen DJs that that they get to the top of the hill and, and there's there's nothing more to them. It's just they they're like, hey, we made it. It's cool. But what keeps you motivated? I think my well, my, mo- my motivation now, especially. Uh, being at the age that I am, I just love to put people on and, and help others, kind of like what Julio G and Tony G did for me, like they put me on. And so, for example, like Twitch, I grew this community and I have a, a, a big platform. Anytime I jump on, I, I have a good community that shows up for me. And there's a lot of DJs that don't have that. And so I try and share that with them and kind of let them experience that. I, I invite people to my homes and I... I mean, not my homes, but my home, and, <laughs> and I let them perform with me to my audience, and it's just a whole different feeling for them uh, than what they experience doing it on their own. And so, I just like to put people on and, and work with others, and I, I, I take joy in seeing others come up as well. A lot of a lot of people when they make it, they, they don't do that. They don't. It's it's mine. I I I created it. I made it. 
So it's always good to see somebody giving back. In this day and age, especially, uh, there's there's actual schools, at DJ in schools. There's there's people that like want to give back and teach these young kids, hey, this is an art form that is records, you know. You know, hey, the computer does a good jo- job too, and we're not going to knock that, but there's something about that art form of a mixer and, and, and two turntables, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of kids that are, are, so, yeah, are into it now, We right? definitely want to teach the art form. And then, I mean, I, I can even let the cat out the bag here. This is the first time anyone's hearing about this, but I have I even have, like, a after-school program of DJing so that's going to go into schools throughout the San Bernardino School District. Nice. And um, that's going to start next year. And, um, again, it's just us teaching the craft and, and then letting kids experience experience it for themselves have you seen some, some of these kids i've seen some of these kids online that are just ridiculous oh man yeah i mean 12 13 years old and they're they're, they're killing tables mixer everything got the tricks down spinning doing behind the back everything and i'm just like yo man i mean these kids aren't fast right they're uh they're they're picking up from our our the generations before right we got to a certain peak and they're picking up from where we took it and taking it another level in ad- in addition. So it's crazy. It's crazy where where they're taking it. What do you What do you think the next plateau for DJing is? Because we because we've had, we've come from just playing records to you know Grandmaster Flash, the Jazzy Jeff, the, the Julio G's yourself, and it's you got these kids, and then you know with the with the Adding on of a, of the computer and stuff and the laptop that that's a whole another yeah. thing now. I mean, what do you uh, think? We're, I mean, you know, like us as the junkies, we've done turntable bands, we've done turntable performances and things like that, and then now kids are doing you know like uh, beat performances and things with keypads and all this Crazy. other stuff. So Ableton, all this stuff opened up a, a whole new world in DJ. So yeah, the performance uh, that a DJ can perform now, it's just leaps and bounds to what we were able to do you know like when we were coming up it's so it's so crazy i mean it, it, it's a good thing because i think for a little bit it seemed like it might have gotten it, it would get lost you know the, the initial art form of two turntables and a mixer you know the computer and it, it was i think a lot of djs at first were kind of like oh, that's cheating you know uh, did you ever feel like in the beginning like oh this is kind of cheating this is kind of not the true art form of this or were you kind of receptive to 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 technology i've always been open to technology but <clears throat> when serato came out i owned a record store at the time <laughs> and i saw that as the death of vinyl and the death of my record store oh. and so of course outwardly i was against it but inwardly i'm like oh damn this is dope <laughs> <laughs> you can't you you just take a computer, uh, you know, like we would take a flight to do, you know, like to, to perform in another city. We would have to take a flight and check in your whole bag of records and hope to God no one would take anything oh. and things like that. Where I've had experiences, some some people stole records from other, you know, other friends. Of yeah. Mine. But yeah, like for you to be able to just walk onto a, a plane and you just take your laptop and that's your music. That was incredible to me. Uh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Traveling with the, with the crate. Tra- traveling with a crate of records versus traveling with a computer man night and day oh. performing you carrying a crate up onto a stage <laughs> versus just plopping a laptop next to your turntables night big, and day. Big, big difference so yeah i mean i love technology but at the time when it came out i was hating on it outwardly because i owned a record store yeah but i knew and then sure enough uh within six months of Serato starting to take over, like just catching fire. That was it. Like uh, my, my record store was done. Oh. R- records though have in the, in the last couple of years, have made a resurgence. Right? It's made a resurgence. Record stores have become cool. I, I, I owned my record store from 2003, no 2001 to 2010. And um, in that time it, you know, like, Serato just took over heavy through the late 2010s into 2020. But yeah, like um, from about 2018 to 2010 to now, um, 
vinyl has has made a resurgence. You see vinyl in Target. You see vinyl in Doodas or yeah, uh, you know, just cool places. Even bookstores. Right. Uh, I've seen vinyl up in in uh, bookstores. And then on the flip side of that, you know, like guys like Newmark who who press vinyl and they sell vinyl and all of that stuff. Their projects are pushed back a year or so because there's such a back a back Crazy. order on. You know, like they're trying to take care of the hundreds of thousands of records that Target ordered, or, or that uh, Barnes and Nobles ordered wow. for their, you know, their projects and things like that, or the special Prince release <laughs> that the you know Target is putting out. You know, there, um, there was always something. Uh, you know, my son, he 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 collects vinyl now. I mean, he comes home with Tribe Called Quest, Old Nirvana. He goes to the he goes to the the. Uh, Salvation Army and finds albums all the time, uh, right. and he's bringing back <clears throat> old school stuff. You know, uh, he's asking my father in law if he has any old albums and Earth, Wind, and Fire, different stuff, and, they, and and he brings them in. I've I, I think the connection that's there is there's something about physical again. I mean, we it talked is, about yeah. getting together earlier. You know, one on one, the physical connection. There's something about that piece of vinyl and the and the art, right? And yeah. the picture on the front. I I was I would be amazed at my dad's albums when I was little. He had all these cool albums, Stevie Wonder, and I was, and just looking at the art for hours and the words and even in our day, yeah, opening the, up a cassette and reading the lyrics inside. You know that small print. You know that whole thing is lost. You know, like uh, and and I think this newer generation is appreciating that and they're seeing that and they they want and then. You know, collectible. Nost- nostalgia. Everything is digital nowadays, but, you know, to, to hold a physical piece and to get a cool poster in it or something like yeah. that, you know, it, all of that, it, it, it's uh, it's it's becoming cool again. Yeah, I, I, I'm, even even the days of CDs going on, and, and, and we were talking about the game the other day when he first came out, and I remember going to Stonewood Mall and waiting in line and getting that CD of his, you know, and I'm like, what happened to that CD? It, was, it got lost or sold at a yard sale or something like that and downloaded to the computer and that was the end of that. But there was something about having those CDs and they make shirts with pictures of old tapes and, and old CD titles and you have all these classic hip-hop albums and, and, and CDs and tapes and it's like, that's cool. And I think it for the young people, it's like a whole brand new thing. You it's know? a brand new thing, yeah, because they've been growing up with everything digital and you could look up everything, you know, just at a flick of a finger or something like that. But there's something to going to an actual store and looking and pulling out something and holding something physical, you know? Right. And now, you created something new with, with a few of your friends and during the pandemic. And, and I was at the first couple of, of them at the Gray in Long Beach. You guys created Club Real Ones. Yes. Right? Did I say that was right, right? It's yep. called ones, right? And uh shout out to Planet Promote, Bobito the Chef, Prop Hip Hop. <laughs> okay, so uh, we went to the first one. Cam was there, my daughter was there, my son, I mean my my, my wife. We're all there. My, my it seemed like my whole our whole family was there on Cam. We had cousins and, and, and everybody was showing up left and right and we were just like, Hey, we had a great time. And I don't, like you said, I don't know if it was because it was just a pandemic and we were just like done with everything and, 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 and let's just have a great time. But you guys created a great atmosphere. And I think other than prop talking on the mic, it was just all DJs, like not just regular DJs, though. We <laughs> some of the best around, you know, but it was it was fun just watching you guys work and just do your thing. Uh, promote was just killing it. You were killing it. Uh, there was just so many DJs. I was just like, yo, all these dudes are here, and it was a great time. And and I think we all needed that. Tell us how that came together a little bit. Um, that came together through promote and Bobito uh, talking and saying, let's let's create an event where we bring everybody together. And so kind of like all the things we've been doing on Twitch, bringing guys together, working together, all of that. We wanted to bring back that backyard barbecue party style to you know like bring everybody together and so it's just a day of all djs a whole lineup of djs and then you got a taco guy in the back you got vendors selling cool little trinkets and shirts and artwork and all this other stuff and it's it's just a whole community vibe 
to where we all come together and just enjoy a Sunday of music, bonding, people getting together and, you know, just having fun. Yeah, the, the, the vibe was, uh, was great. I mean, everybody just came together. Uh, it, even people you didn't know, it seemed like you knew them. Everybody was cool. I mean, I think, once again, we forgot how, how good that stuff feels. And, and, and with the pandemic and then coming together and just being like, yeah, man, we, we, we need to have fun. We, we, and, the, and the crazy thing about that whole thing, the age gap, the age. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was, like, old ladies, like, getting down. And then you had, like, young ladies twerking. I won't say which one. As I'm one of them was my daughter. But, and then you had people in the middle, like, me and you. And we're, like, dancing with our wives. I think, I think your mom came to one of the shows, right? Was it, was it, who's Not mom my came? mom. Whose mom came? Somebody's mom came. And we were like, what the heck? And, and she was dancing with somebody. Yeah. Right? And we were just like, it's crazy. But it was like a... a I think you guys created like this this thing, and, and Bobby called it like a like a Sabbath, like a, a, a time to come together and have fun and just forget about the rest of the week and get together and just have a great time. And, and I was amazed that from, from 60, 65, whatever, all the way down to, you know, 20s, you know, early 20s, and then everybody in between and just having a good time. I mean, the crazy thing is that you guys played everything and, and everybody's singing all the songs and everything, knew everything. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that was the whole goal. The whole goal is, and the, the vision of all of that was to just bring people together, have a good time, create that type of atmosphere where young and old and just family can all come together. So dope. No, how's the DJ ICI changed since he is a uh, a family man? I mean, we we can go on your Instagram and. You you have four four. I have four boys. Four boys. I mean, I can only imagine that household. <laughs> it must be fun. It's uh, a loud one. It's a loud <laughs> one, man. Constant <laughs> fighting. <laughs> How has things changed for you now that you're a, 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 a I wouldn't say a full-fledged dad, because you've been a dad for a little while now, but, I mean, you have four boys, you're married, you, you, you're, how does that change for a guy like you that was probably just, hey, man, got my backpack, got my records, let's go do this. I mean, does that, does that, how does that affect you now? Um, it's changed me in, into where... I think I, I've got more patience. Uh, you got to have a lot of patience being around that many kids and, um, you know, boys always fighting and all of that. But, no, um, it's it's definitely helped me with patience. It, it's definitely gave uh, kept me more grounded and, and calm in, in certain situations and things like that. But, but no, I, I think uh, it's also given me a lot more love and, and uh, appreciation for life and, and – uh, and then I gotta appreciate my wife, man. My wife is the one that holds it all together. She's the she's the heart, the soul of of all of us, you know. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. Are are any of your boys interested in music? They're all they're all interested in music, but uh, you know, like uh, my oldest is into piano. Uh, my my other one is into. Um, electronic music uh my 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 twins are just kind of in pop music but i don't see anyone uh into you don't, DJing you don't see, yet. You don't see a dj there yet <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe, maybe I, I i'm not encouraging it at, at all but man i would hope that one of them would pick it up or one of them would it, it's got to be in their bones somewhere man it, it has to be it's in there i see i see it in them but i don't i don't see anyone um how, how old is your oldest he's uh 15 okay He's getting those high school years now. Yeah. So th- he's gonna have to be like Isaiah back in the day, and when he when he sees the little, hey, this might uh, help me earn a little bit of uh, respect and a little bit of acclaim here. Let me start DJing, right? He might he might fall into the same same thing that you fell into. I don't I don't see it. No, really. <laughs> he's just low key. He's so low key. Um, but I I think you know like. I think he's he, he takes after m- more of my wife. He's very studious, very smart, you know, just honors everything. Uh, I wasn't that student. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have four, so I'm sure there's one of you in one of them, man. So yeah, my my next one is ten, and then my my twins are are nine. So like, hopefully, one of those three yeah will take it up. C- carry we'll on see. the legacy there. Hopefully, we'll see. A little bit. Uh, how did you get the name? 
I got the name because my name was Isaiah, so everyone was just calling me Ice. And then uh, when I was thinking of a DJ name, I was like, okay, maybe uh, I'll call myself Icy I, as in Icy Isaiah. And I told my my homegirl that was in front of me in homeroom, and she was just like, nah, that, that don't sound right. You know, like, <laughs> that don't sound cool. Uh, I don't like Icy I. Um, why don't you just double it up? And it stuck. So she's like, Icy Ice. Dope. So I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> it stuck with me ever since. Dope, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming out, bro. I appreciate you, Dave. Thank you for having me, man. I mean, it was dope, man, having you come out. Um, me and Cam will do one one extra thing, man. Okay. And it, it's what we call, is is a little thing called the Furious Five, bro. And what we do is we ask you five furious questions. Get a little, get a little answer right here. Okay. All right. So, Street Gospel Furious Five. Question number one. If you only had one album to play at a backyard party, what album would you play? Wow. wow. Um, okay. okay. I'm, I'm, I'm strictly picking, picking for a backyard, backyard party. party. Yes. yes. And, and you, you only, only could pick, pick one album, so there's got to be a lot of bangers, bangers on that album. And it's got to be Chronic 2000. 2000. <laughs> <laughs> That'll keep the backyard party going for a long time, man, with Dr. Dre and Snoop, man. You just keep mixing it, and it'll be, it'll be fine, man. Dope. Question number two. If you can play one event or one place... In the next, next month, month, or, or let, let's say the next, next year, or let's, let's say in your in, in your in the rest of your career, what would you play? Man, I would like to play in a country that I've never played at before. So, name any country I haven't been to. I'd like to play there. Man. Oh, no. Do you still travel? I haven't traveled as much ever since my twins were born. Yeah. Um, so go figure. Nine years now. Like I really haven't gotten international travel in nine years. But now that they're getting to an older age, I'd, I'd like to get back out there and travel again. That would be dope, man. Hey, with that Twitch jumping, you know, you're all yeah. over the world. You know? No, the, the fun thing with Twitch is it's giving me that ability to, to build with other people in different countries now. So, yeah, I feel like I can go to a lot of countries and I'd have some friends over there. Right. And, 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 and it's like, I know this guy's good. Because, look, <laughs> you can watch him every day on Twitch, right? Nope. <laughs> Question number three. Okay, man. This, this question right here, dude. Why does every DJ have to play Suavemente? <laughs> Bro, why? I, I just, I, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry for all, you know, my family, uh, friends, whoever else. Why? I hate that song. I, I leave the dance floor when they play it. You'll be, they'll be jamming, man. It'll be fun. And then there'll be a pause and swam. And I'm just like, I'm out. Why, bro? It's just one of those hits, bro. Like, uh, it's just one of those songs, you know, like Cha Cha Slide that just gets everybody oh. up, man. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, and there are songs, right? I mean, I mean, there are bangers that you know are going to hit. I mean, right? Like, what are, what are what are the bangers that are gonna, that'll hit? Oh, there's a lot of bangers, man. But, yeah, Suavemente is just one of those bangers that just gets everybody up. Doesn't get you up, but it'll get everybody uh, else up. used to be sitting down, man. <laughs> I'm getting back up when we play some Blow the Whistle or uh, Montel Jordan or something. Well, then I'll get up. It ain't no fun. Then I'll get up. But until then, I'm just, you know, I'm just chilling. I, I just, Suavemente, man. I'm like, chill on that, man. All right. Now, question number four. What is your ideal client that you work for? Like if somebody hires you, what is ideal for you? Like like I know you probably not ideal would be a person that says, here's my song list, play, play this, right? What's an ideal client for you? Man, uh, ideal client for me is someone that gets it, that understands who we are, who we represent, who, you know, like our background and all of that, and then just lets us do our thing. Yeah. I mean, it gives us the freedom. You got to trust 
you guys yeah. to do your thing, right? I right. mean, and, and, and that's what you pay for. Hey, yeah, I love those clients that say, yo, I want you to play my event and I trust you. Dope. That's, that's the best feeling. Last question, man. Number five, what's the best type of event to play? Man, the best type of event to play is any event where everyone is having a great time and they enjoy <laughs> anything and everything you you do and it doesn't matter, man. So dope. That's man. that's the best type of event to play. That's tight, man. I appreciate you coming out, man. Appreciate you inviting me, man. Hey, hey man, you you want to shout out every anything before we get out of here? Hey man, shout out to Della for connecting us and having me out here. Know, and right? uh, shout out to my my boys, the real ones, Bobito the Chef, Planet Promote, okay, Rocket Pop. That's every guys. first Sunday of the month, right? Every first Sunday, yes. Yeah. So the next one, okay. May first, Gray, the Gray in Long Beach. Gray in Long Beach. Yep. Okay. Every first Sunday of the month. So join us, even if you're hearing this a year or two years down the line. We're gonna keep it going. Yeah, it's, it's it's fun. What about on Twitch? Where can they find you? At? Twitch, you guys can find me at twitch.tv slash DJ Icy Ice, and I'm on daily, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Dude, Monday through Friday, you're on there. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. I'm on, and then uh, on the weekends, sporadic. I'll, I'll do nighttime. I'll do afternoon, something like that. You know? So dope, man. And, and then you're on the gram too. If they want to find I'm you on the gram, gram, yeah. You guys want to find me on the gram at DJ Icy Ice. Thanks, man. I appreciate you coming out, brother. Appreciate you too, bro. Thank hey. you. Give it up for DJ Icy Ice, man. Appreciate him coming out. Check him out on the gram. Check him out on Twitch. Go on there. Subscribe to his channel. Put a little tip in there, man. Whatever you got to do, man. You know, these DJs, man, they they hung it, they hung it out, you know, during the pandemic. And uh, they made it happen for a lot of us, man. So it's glad to see them coming back. We out. <laughs>